Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and this is um, the Paper Outpost Crafting. <laughs> we are doing, I have a prototype today. I'm so excited to show you this little prototype. It is um, a lined envelope and it's a, it's a very easy process. It's a very easy beginner process that anybody can do and it's a way to give you a place to place things. Like for example, um, I have a collection of old ephemera. Here's a tin type photo. A, um, this is a Victorian trade card. This is an old handwritten letter. And you don't need things like this to put in your envelopes. You can use, just use pretty paper, put a rubber stamp on top and make it like stationary paper or writing paper. But these are just some fun things that you could um, collect and uh, possibly put in a little pocket or an envelope. Um, or it's, you could leave it empty, which is perfectly fine. So I'm just going to put these little lovelies in here so you can get a full effect of see what that, seeing what that might look like. And you can display them so they just peek up, which is kind of pretty. And I also left this open in case I wanted to tuck something in here. So I could do something like that as well. It's just a doily um, folded in half and glued at the base and on the edges, um, which also goes to the back of this. So um, we're going to make this. It's very simple and it doesn't take a lot of things. If you have, um, okay, so let's, I, I just did some decoration on the front, a little bit of fabric pieces, this pretty little um, flower that somebody gave me, thank you very much, and um, just a little uh, doily. And this fits nicely inside junk journals. You think I can find one right now? Here's one. Um, and you can, sometimes they're bigger than your junk journal, which is actually okay. You can put it in here and um, paper clip it to a page. You can, you can um, put it on the first, like on the inside, like when they open it up as if it's uh, um, something to be utilized right away, that they know it's there. You can put it in the back. That's another option that you can do. Or you can put it on top and bind everything together or put it underneath and bind everything together with a sash and that would look really pretty as well. So you can also make your envelopes smaller so they fit and hide inside your junk journal. Um, okay, so what we did, where's everything? I had everything. <laughs> where's my everything? Here it is. Uh, so what I started with was a piece of, um, this was avocado dyed paper, but this is just printer paper and you could use plain printer paper to have a white um, uh, inner lining and or you could rubber stamp on your inner lining to give it some prettiness. Now this one, I created the um, envelope and then I rubber stamped at the end. Now this one, I think what I'll do is I will rubber stamp now just to give a random design. And I know only a piece of the paper at the top is going to show. So I don't need to really do more than a third of the paper. So I'm, I'm just going to use the same stamp so you can get an idea. I'll try not to drift too far off the, the original prototype. Um, this is black soot distress ink, if you're curious. And uh, this is a rubber stamp that I believe I got from Etsy. That's what it looks like, a little flower stamp. So I did spritz my uh, ink just to wake it up a little bit. And oh, I'll just do this. Just some random ones here. And I'll stagger these. So it looks a little bit different than the other one. So it will appear as if this is going down into the envelope. I don't think I need to do more than the three lines. But that already looks pretty to me. I love that look. Okay, I'm just moving it up there. Okay, maybe it's about there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Maybe over there. Okay, here. <laughs> okay, stop, Pam, stop. Okay, all right. Now, um, if you have an old book or if you have any book with any print on it, um, you can use it. I have some of these. Let me back up a bit so you can see this. I have some of these old uh, German papers, which are just beautiful from these old books, and I love the Gothic text on here. I think it's really pretty, um, but you can use regular text. Here's a nice page with a lot of text block on it, and that's what I'm looking for. You can also use ones with pictures. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, so this is the side I want to show on the outside of the envelope. And I made a little mistake on this envelope. <clears throat> As you can see, the writing is upside down. I'm going to now correct that with this one, but I think it still looks pretty even though the writing is upside down. So don't worry if you make it upside down, but let's see if we can make it right side up. So this is going to be the outside turn it that way. And then I'm going to turn it upside down so that when I fold this down, the writing is the correct way. See that? And then I fold this up, the writing is the correct way. 
Now, obviously on the back, the writing will be upside down, but I'm not too worried about the back. Or you could cut out another piece and just layer it across the back in the right orientation. Totally up to you. Um, so I'm going to take this uh, piece of copy paper. It's 20 pound regular printer copy paper that I get from Amazon. And um, I'm going to use my Scotch Create glue stick, permanent glue stick, just the one I like. And I'm just going to glue this down. Um, trying to get as much of the back area as I can so it's nice and secure. A little bit across the edges. And make sure you get the, um, the edges, that's always nice. Now, whoops, placement is very important. You just want to do it right the first time. And if you don't get it right the first time, it's okay. Um, but let's try for right in the middle of the text block. Let's see if we can do that. We are going to do a little bit of trimming. Um, actually, let me migrate over here so I only have to trim one. No, no, no. I'm going to, I'm going to go here. I'm going to, okay, am I looking even? Looking even, looking even. That's not bad. Not bad for a first go. And it is okay if there's a little bit of wrinkle on that because I think that just lends to the quality of the design. Okay, so now bring it a little closer. You can see there's a little edge. I'm going to remove the edging of the, let's look at, see, what I want to do is remove the white. So I'm going to look at it from this side and trim this off. I'm going to use a metal ruler so I have a nice sharp edge. And when you have a delicate or um, fragile papers, backing it onto another paper gives it um, the strength of a thousand. So uh, it's a nice way to use your fragile papers. So don't be afraid that you get fragile papers because you can mount them on other papers. It's always great to use a good blade when you're doing this so that you don't tear or wrinkle the paper. And you'll know when your blade gets dull because you'll st start to tear and wrinkle the paper. Okay, here we go. And I think I'm about midway with this, this lovely blade. So let's see if it'll work for the rest of this project. I hope so. Hope you're having a dandy day. Hope everything's wonderful in your world. Okay, so I am taking it right to the edge of the text block. So I have text everywhere. You may, oh, see there. See, I'm starting to have, okay. So what I'm going to do at this moment, because I got a tear and I knew it was coming. I could feel because I know I've been working with this blade for a bit. So I put your glasses on and do that. That's how, that's how I do it. It's pretty fast, pretty easy or a little bit, but that's what's okay. We're going to go a little further in from the tear so I can get rid of the tear. I'm going to sacrifice a slight piece of my paper, but that's okay. Did I do all right? Yeah. So now I don't have any problems there. So it's all text block. And it doesn't have to be all text block. I just wanted that look for this particular uh, thing. So it's right side up. The text is right side up here, but I'm going to turn it over and this is upside down. So I'm going to, this is what I want at the top. Now it's upside down, but because I'm going to fold it over, it will now be right side up. Okay. All right. So, um, also another thing with this one, slight modification. Um, I went ahead and folded it first and then I sewed around from here like that. But what I missed was this piece. So I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to sew this first and then I'm going to go around and do that after I fold it. So this is what we're going to do first. Okay. So we're going to make our fold wherever we want our uh, envelope to lie. And this is creating the width of your envelope. So when you stick it in your journal, this is going to be how wide it is. So you want to just pay attention to, is that the correct length that you want? I like to give a little buffer here. Don't fold it right against here, but maybe give like anything, like a quarter inch, half an inch, something like that to give yourself a little buffer there, which is really good. Now here's, we're going to jump in and just sew this. And that's going to reinforce the edge where people will be pulling and grabbing things in and out of here. So I want that to be strong. So we're going to swing on over to the, um, sewing machine. Now you don't have to use the sewing machine here. I actually glued this piece of velvet red ribbon on here. So you can do that as well. That's an option. It's a no sew option. Okay. But come on over. Let's see if I don't accidentally turn you off here. Okay. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. So here is our thing. I, my goal is just to sew straight across here. That's it. Okay. That's where we're going. Improvements happening on the fly here. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch, which is number four. Okay. Okay. 
So we did that. So I'm gonna trim that off. You can go back and forth and, and secure it with the little back forth thing, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sew again this edge. So uh, it tore the little edge because it's a fragile piece of paper, but it's okay, we're gonna carry on. Um, so now I can fold my little envelope shape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come along and sew up here, up here, down, sewing these two edges together, and then across the bottom, just for the look. I like that look. Okay, so I don't know if I'm gonna actually start at the place I said, but that's the gist of it. Okay, I'm gonna actually make this, oh, it's already on a five. So the stitches are wet, but I'm gonna, gonna make them a little bit, maybe take it to a 2.5 so the stitches are not so close together. And, okay, oh yeah, definitely a different look here. And it also sews faster, which is kind of fun when you make your stitches longer. And wider. Oh, I have no, I am not, I'm not doing anything because I have no thread in there. Look at that. Okay, where'd my thread go? All right. Um, it's gone. No, I have to re-thread my machine. Okay, so just take a second. And sometimes that happens in the throes of excitement. Okay, I'm working around the camera and, okay, got that. Now I'm going to thread. You can't see, can you? Okay, I think you can see a little bit. I know I hit it. Okay, hang on. Okay, did it go through? Yeah. Okay, we got it. All right, we got the machine threaded. Let's make sure our bottom bottom bobbin thread is there. Are you there? Where'd you go? Oh, no, you kind of shortened up on me too. Boy, it was threading mayhem here. All right, let's just thread that baby again. That's the way it goes here. There we go. Seal this all up. Now one up and down should grab that, and then you pull this, and then that grabs your underneath thread, and then you should be good to go. Okay. All right. We're going to try that again. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now, I think I'm going to, what am I going to do? Maybe I make it not so wide. Okay, so I'm going to do four on the width and 2.5 on the length. Okay, just for fun. I think it's going to look better. Okay, once we have confidence, we can go a little faster. You can go as slow or as fast as you want. And uh, I'm, I tend to be a reckless, fast sewer. Not necessarily the best technique, but hey, it's fun for me. Um, I do not profess to be an excellent seamstress or an excellent paper sewer, but I, I have fun in the process, so that's all that matters. Okay, and my machine is very forgiving. It is a Project One Way Brother Limited Edition CE1125P is in Peter R W. There you go. In case anybody wondered. Okay. And there we go. And now we're back in this way. I'm just gonna come along this way. Alright. And you'll be able to see the difference in the width of the stitching to see what look you like best. Now here I am going to lock it in just so it doesn't unfurl or unfrazzle. Just a couple and then you're locked and you come off. Okay. And there. Okay. Okay. And I'm just swinging you back over here. Okay. Swung you back over here and we have this really cute little envelope. The text is right side up. The text is right side up and it's lined and it's strong and it has reinforcement here, which is awesome. If you want, you can fold this back and use a little distress ink to amplify the fold crease, which I think always looks sort of cool. Now, I don't think I'm gonna go ahead and ink around because I like the look of the stitching and I want that to show. So let's see what else we did here. We did a little decoration on the flap and we put a uh, doily here and let me show you how I did that. It was no big deal if you have any of these little paper doilies. Um, okay, so I took my little doily and I folded it in half and I put a thin bead of glue down the center and then just a little bit up on either side, maybe quarter inch, half an inch. So this is Fabrifix glue. If you've never seen it, where's an example? Here it is. This is what the bottle looks like. Um, it's a clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. Um, just like the glue, um, it, it works well. You have a second or two to reposition if all disaster strikes. Um, but uh, 
it grabs fast and you can even work with wet things which is kind of cool because sometimes I, I coffee dye fabric and then I'm working with a wet piece of fabric because I'm impatient and it still glues. Okay, so now I'm, you can measure this, but I'm going to eyeball. Eyeball and hope I get in the middle. Looks pretty good. Okay, so that is that. So this is creating an extra little pockety tuck thing here if you want to use that or you could just seal the whole thing down if you don't want it to be a pocket tuck thing. And um, now we're going to go ahead and just put a little decoration on this side. And this can be anything from um, other papers, fabric, scraps, whatever you have. Let me go find, oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Oh, okay. I like to use what is close to me and I have this pretty um, uh, tissue paper that somebody gave me a little gift in. And um, I think that might be really pretty as like the background. Like this one has a pretty piece of fabric. That's actually from a dress. And um, so let me maybe, I just want to show you something different that you can use. Let's try a little piece here. That's a torn edge. Oh, that would actually look really pretty collaged on there, wouldn't that? On the ends? Oh, yeah, I really like that. Okay, so I'm going to take off all the straight edges, and I want the torn look. Oh, falling in love with this piece of paper. I love this paper. Okay. Are you going to fit on there? I think I might just do that. I really like that. This looks pretty on there. Maybe I'll ink the edges. Maybe I will. I'm going to ink the edges here. Why not? It'll give a little more contrast pop, which is good um, and not mandatory. We all have different feelings about inking. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I'm going to put the glue on this and I'm going to try the thumb technique. So if I can get it all over here, a piece of fluff on there. All right. Um, now it's stuck to my finger. Okay. Pachoom, off into oblivion. Okay. This is a very delicate piece of paper, so the thumb technique here, um, just riding over the glue stick, minimizes the, I sound so official, don't I? It minimizes the, the chance of a tear or a fracture in the delicateness of the paper. Um, you just won't maybe tear your paper as much. Now you could just lay it down flat, which is not a bad idea, or you can wrinkle it. Let's say it doesn't quite fit, and you can just make it smaller, which is kind of fun about this, this glue and this paper. Um, there. Now, it's got some extra wrinklies on it, which is kind of cool. It's got more texture. I think it's really pretty. Maybe I want to put a focal point. Let me rummage around for a focal point. Hold on. Okay, this is my, what is this? My clusters bucket, which strangely has some new reproduction of butterflies in there, which are very pretty. They might look nice on there. Oh, maybe I will decorate it with some butterflies. That's kind of a good idea, but I, I want something to be an anchor base. So I made some clusters. See, there's three pieces of paper stapled together. You never know where you're going to use this stuff. So um, here's a little piece sewn. This is just a piece of uh, flour sack, coffee dyed, mounted on a piece of paper and sewn around just for future use of unknown origin. Let's see, I want something. Oh, that's kind of cute. No, no. Um, oh, that's pretty. Not the right colors, though. I mean, something that pops. Okay, I think I'm going to do something different then right there. I don't know. It's just, do I want these butterflies? Maybe I want to put a butterfly there. I think maybe I do. I'm going to put a butterfly there. Yeah, okay. So let's, let's extricate a butterfly here. Oh, okay. We're going to now cut which butterfly should we use. Maybe the blue one? The blue one would look nice. Okay. I'm going to cut this butterfly out. Yeah, somebody sent these from far away from Europe. So I don't know where she got these, but they're really cool. And I think you can probably get them. They're reproduction Victorian die cuts and you can probably get them on Etsy or eBay or something like that. Or she had some amazing source that we know not of. So sometimes things are available in other countries that are not available here. I don't know where it came from. So, um, okay. Now I could actually cut those two butterflies apart, which I think I might. I will free the butterflies from each other. Okay, with my deft fussy cutting, not a skill that I have at all. So probably never will, and I'm, I'm okay with that. You went pretty up there, but maybe getting lost too much in the color. Not to maybe too many butterflies. I don't know. I don't know. I need a focal point. I'll be right back. Okay, grab some things we, we used the other day. We made these um, buttons just with beads. We just filled in the hollow in the button. And um, that might be fun as a focal, but that would look really pretty on there, I think. 
Um, it's a little bumpy, but I'm okay with that because this is going to be a removable from the journal. Or I could, like I said, you could layer it on top of the journal, but I think that looks really pretty. So um, what else am I going to do here? Okay, so this is a cluster that I just found that I made. But I actually think, yeah, that's going to look cool. The brown is going to give some pop. So we're going to use that against the button. Okay. That there. That there, I think. Okay, so I'm going to glue this, I think, half on. It's fun to use buttons. They're so pretty. They're like begging to be used in junk journals. Okay, there. Okay, that I think that's cute. And um, now I also found this butterfly. Could put him maybe here. Maybe he's too soft. We need something with a little bit more impact. I found this little piece of, oh, this is actually some kind of fabric half cluster I made. Don't know if I'm going to incorporate that in here. I like the punch of black, but maybe not today. Um, maybe I might put a stamp. No, no. But I have this little piece of lace, this coffee dyed lace piece. And I don't know, maybe I'm just going to, I'm going to make a little faux butterfly out of it. I could do that. No, don't like that. Um, but I could, where's that other blue butterfly? There you are. Uh, so you can just keep going. Like you can keep adding little, little things. But I think, I think it actually looks good just like that. Um, maybe something here, something subtle. Do I want to do the rubber stamp? I don't know. Once I do the rubber stamp, I'm, but it would give cohesiveness and uniformity with this and that. Oh, it's so committal. I don't know. I just, I'm not feeling it. Back away, back away. Okay. Um, no. See, sometimes you got to try things out. Somebody did a little um, dress. Isn't that cute? Maybe not the right theme for this one, but I, lo I do love that. Um, okay, so let's see. Okay, guess what? I grabbed the stickles and the Nouveau drops, and I just ha I'd have a little fun with this in front. I know. I know. Here she goes. So this would not be a bad color. I also have sandstone, which is sort of pretty. Let's see. Maybe a gold would be good, but this isn't bad. Let me, let me look. Okay, I'm back. And, okay, so I got these options. This is a, this is gold stickles. Okay, so maybe I'll use that one or this one. Let me try both. Actually, let me try this one. This is Nouveau Drops, Crystal Drops in the color Bright Gold. Okay, let's give this a go. All right, these usually flow pretty easily. They rarely get stuck. She's sticking her foot in her mouth. I can tell right now. The, the technique is pretty simple. It is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And I'm just going around here to give it a little bit of something little extra accent. And this is where this is what I call playtime. You're just having fun with this and decorating and goofing off and, and things like that. And uh, I could actually, um, I could fill in the whole thing. That would be kind of cool. I'm trying to stagger it. I'm not very good at staggering. I'm um, like, almost like bricks, you know, how you stagger them. All right, just go random, Pam. I'm not staggering at all. They don't look staggered. I've lost my stagger ability. I am not staggering with the best of them. It's early. I've only had one coffee. Okay, there. There, I just did that. Too much? I don't know. You make the call. Now, of course, we must set this aside and let it dry. <laughs> and um, you could just leave it as that, or you could add more to it. Totally up to you. I think that's kind of pretty as is. Uh, do I want to add a butterfly? I don't know. Do I? I could. Um, this butterfly he looks a little pale. Let's see if we can make him a little darker. And maybe he will come become part of the piece. Or maybe we'll just say, no, you don't belong, but you will, we will play with you another day. We will just see. Okay, so he is pink. This probably is from a cry cut machine or a paper punch of some sort. I'm guessing a cry cut machine. And uh, let's just, oh boy, try not to smudge the dots, Pam. Okay, just going to make him a little darker with my, I'm going to spritz a little water, wake up the ink that's on there and just color him in. Make him a little more friendly. Now, I've made a mess on my desk. Yes, yes, I know. So I'm going to come in for the save with, well, we've got a Kleenex. How about that? Okay, so this is one of those cases where you have a wet piece of um, something, but you're gonna, you want to carry forward so that, 
uh, Fabrifix glue comes in really handy because you can just keep working with it. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Okay, so let's see. Up here, that would be pretty too. Here, that would be pretty too. We're here, nice. Right in the middle. Oh, maybe right in the middle. Maybe, I don't know. We're sometimes fluttering off to the side. It can even hang off. It doesn't even have to stay just on that. Let's try that, okay. Very delicate again. I think I'm gonna come in here with the, the, the Fabrifix, which has been poured into the Sugar Bells icing piping bottle for thinner stream and easier squeezing application purposes. And I know because our hands go through a lot crafting and uh, we want to be able to, I probably shouldn't put that much glue on it. Oh, too late. Okay, okay, just stick it down lightly. I can stick it right over the thingies. Yeah, there we go. Well, I mean, did I put it in the right spot? You tell me. Maybe I'll give him a little accent just because I'm here and I'll maybe, no, I'm going to use a different color. I was going to use the Nouveau drops, but I don't know, something is saying go for, this is Buttercup. Buttercup liquid pearls. Basically all the same goop that you just squeeze and apply. It's plugged. Okay, so what we do when it's plugged usually happens when it's an older one or a dry one, but the stuff inside is still good and you just got to get there and I get there with a little uh, pearl topped pin and I get in there and if I had my glasses, okay, there we go. Clear it and now we carry on. Oh, yeah, so it came out sideways. Okay, that's all right. All right, there we go. Okay, just give me three little dots. Okay. Yeah, just for a little accent. I think I smooshed him, but oh, well, that's okay. It happens. Um, so now we get to put some fun stuff in it. Okay, let's say you don't have fancy ephemera and stuff like that, but you still want to put something pretty in it. How is this going to fit? Yeah, I just cut some pretty um, pieces of colored paper. They're regular copy weight, and this one's a little thicker. This is a um, cardstock, and maybe I will just do something very simple, like this little leaf design. Or if you have any rubber stamp, um, I don't know, maybe I'll make them so they're this way. First, I'm going to write down. Or you can do it at the top, which might make more sense with this design. So we'll try that. I don't know if I'm going to use that cardstock one. You know what I think I'm going to do too? I'm going to... Actually, no, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a Fiskar fancy scissor, designer scissor, and apparently that's majestic. And uh, let's see if I can cut this, give it a pretty border. Doing them all at once, being bold. Okay. Even just on the top and the bottom, that's pretty. That's sometimes all you need to do. Or the sides, depending on how you look at the paper. So if you don't have stuff to put in here, just take some paper and just make some pretty stationery for our inside. And I think now we've got like um, three or four pieces, something that can be tucked in and they can use. So, oh, you could even, you could even put like something like that on there. Oh, that would be pretty, right? Can't see. Sorry. <laughs> um, you can, you can decorate them. Let me just show you some examples. We use the thumb technique here. So if you have, or if you have stickers, you can do that. That's pretty. Or if you have rubber stamps, you can do that. You can make your own stationery. Okay, so there's one. We'll do something different on each one of these so you can get some, what it looks like. Um, did I not have a, yes, this guy. He's a, a leaf rubber stamp. Okay, this is a pig stamp. You can put one there, or you could put one there, and you put one there. And you could even put them all in each corner. That You can do that because this is your stuff. So just different ways you can decorate a little piece of paper quickly or easily. And um, maybe you don't have those, but maybe... Oh, I guess I saw something. Maybe you have a sticker. And you come in and you could put a sticker on here. Now you're going to sit here for an hour trying to get this apart. Trying to use the deftness of your dexterity to... I, use, I said deft twice in this video. I can't do that. I don't know why. Okay, so we have this. I thought maybe I'd just put that just here. I don't know. I just think that looks kind of pretty, huh? I like that the best one. That's my favorite one so far. Okay, so you take the cat's meow. Okay, we have one more. And what can we do on the last one? Oh, we can do a... Um, a punched design. Oh, my punch design little thing is not punch designs. I've, I've commingled things. Look at this. What a mess. 
Um, this is beautiful, though. Oh, look, this is something I probably got from a book or rubber stamped or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to use that as a, a border for the top or on the side. That would be kind of cool. Um, do I have two of those? I do. Oh, look at that. Do that. That's kind of cool. Um, but, oh, oh, we did these things. Yeah, we did rubber stamping and then drawing them in. Oh, that's pretty. I could just glue that there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So that was a rubber stamp that I just colored in, or somebody colored in. I think it was me. Um, where's my glue? There it is. Okay. So, yeah, you are really not limited to what you can do to decorate this, or you can just leave them plain and let the people decorate them, which is also nice. Maybe put it on this side. Yeah, that's kind of pretty. Okay, so now we're going to attempt to assemble all these together. Okay, so I'm going to put them like that. Okay, you could have also color coordinating, which would be nice. You could use blue and cream colored papers and white. That would be neat, but I didn't have my act together. Okay, so I'm tucking, gingerly tucking, not, not trying to smudge the little dots. So something fun like that to put in your junk journal. See, this one, I, I cannot smudge the dots. Do not smudge the dots. This one will fit interiorly completely, so I can paper clip that in once it's dry or in the beginning. Oh, that's so pretty, isn't it? Or you could even you could even glue this to the inside of your um, cover and just leave it there as a pouch for them to use. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, I know. So many ideas. So there's that. Let's see if Fluffers has anything to say. We are now in the process of locating Fluffers, and he is on the couch hiding amongst the white pillows. Come on. Time for your pup date. No, I don't want to go. No, it's all right. You got to earn your keep. Okay. <laughs> so uh, here we go. You have anything to say? Not a thing. Oh, great. <laughs> You're going to leave Mother High and Dry here, aren't you? You know what I'm going to do. Hello, everybody, Sunshine. Pub. No, not pub. Cub. Pup reporter. Why is that so hard to say? I don't know. Okay, so since you don't have anything to say that's organized, your ears have now disappeared. <gasps> no, Mom, not the ears. Don't make me look like a baby harbor seal. Mom, give me my ears back. Please, where are my ears? No, no ears. What? I said no ears. What'd you say? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I got his ears covered. <laughs> um, uh, all right, you, you got anything? Okay. Um, Baxter's here visiting. I have a friend, and it's wonderful, and he's on Mom's bed right now. Oh, well, that's, that's revealing a lot of information. Baxter's a dog, right? Yeah, Baxter's a dog. Let me clear that up. Baxter is a dog. He's a little woof woof, just like me. Well, he's a bigger woof woof, but he's really cute. Okay, yeah, he's your friend, isn't he? Yeah. Okay, all right, I'll let you go play with him. Thanks, Mom. Okay. <laughs> all right, there you go, son. Have a good time. And I still have fabric packs available, um, so if you are interested, you can get... 40 plus pieces in a pack with free priority shipping um, from eight and a half by 10 down smaller different si things, all a good variety of things for you to play with in your junk journals. You know, it doesn't take much fabric to play in a junk journal. So, I mean, other than actually wrapping a cover, but l using little bits and pieces um, like this can, can really be fun and come in handy for different projects. So keep an eye on your pieces of fabric at home or old clothing or pieces you pick up from the thrift store, but if you don't feel like um, doing that, I will collect these and um, make fabric packs for you. I only have a limited supply, so if you're interested, go for it. They're in my Etsy shop. And I have a free monthly email newsletter. If you would like to get a free digital image emailed to you every month that you can use in your crafting, um, uh, just sign up for my newsletter. The link is down below in the description box. And um, you also get a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. I like to tuck that in the front of my journals to give people an idea of what on earth they just received. And also um, you get a checklist of supplies for uh, as you're traversing the world looking for your junk journals. Um, a whole bunch of stuff you can gather together to make things. You'd be surprised at how many things are easy, easily accessible and free in your world, in your universe, no matter where you live. Just keep your eyes open and you will find things. Um, uh, also a page list of ideas and I have my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, new audio material. And then you can um, watch video podcasts on Spotify any old day of the week. And uh, I have an Etsy shop where I sell journals and bundles and kits and like my fabric pack or my fundle, which is a collection of old and interesting papers. <clears throat> so if you would like to work with the old and interesting papers, I have you covered. 
um, 100 plus pieces. Free priority mail shipping is included with that. And um, they're really cool. If you're a historian or a collector, you're going to find some interesting pieces in there as well. And also, um, I have a print, I sell digi kits, which are printable downloads. Let's see if I can show you a picture of anyone. No, of course, can't. Um, but um, if you want to do a themed journal or you like certain styles of uh, pictures, like for example, here's are some of the ones I was cutting on. So they're going to look something along the lines of this, where you're going to get a bunch of images on a page. <coughs> And then you can cut them up and use them at will in your junk journals. And um, if you don't have a printer or you don't like to print, I can print them for you. I do 10 digi kits at a time for, and then you get the free priority shipping with that. Um, you just send me that you buy the print and mail option only. And then you send me your list of digi kits names that you want. I only need the first two or three words. Send that list, one, two, five, six, seven, ten, and to either my Etsy message or pam at thepaperoutpost.com. That's my email address, pam at thepaperoutpost.com. And then I will ship those off to you. And I have an Amazon shop. If you are looking for any favorite tools or supplies that you see me use here, I try and put links in there. Um, that does help my shop, but you do not pay more for the items for using my links. So thank you very much. And also, um, uh, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Facebook group. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges, as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos, which is so inspirational. You guys just take these ideas and run with them. And also, um, remember, create with reckless abandon. And uh, fun can be simple. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.